Hello everyone, welcome to day 15 of 30 day challenge of learning Tableau from scratch. In today's video, we are going to say some very important uh, small tips that we should be aware when we are learning about Tableau. So let us get started without wasting much time. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. So let us take a quick recap of what we have discussed yesterday. So in a previous class, we have created a small dashboard by you know, learning few of the chart types. We have seen about in a line chart, multiple line chart, donut chart, multiple donut chart and then how we can create cloud chart and then on top of that we tried to create a simple dashboard using floating objects so one dashboard we have created using tiled objects and the second one was using floating objects and then as we learn more about charts we'll try to leverage and, and create some advanced dashboards so stay tuned and continue this journey so in today's video now the first thing is Suppose if at all you want to search for the dimensions or measures or calculated fields that you have created. So here in sample superstore, maybe we have very limited number of fields, right? So it is very easy for us to search or maybe I can simply scroll and see where my field is. But in real time, the number of columns that we might have will be very huge in number. So, and the number of calculated fields that you will be creating will be huge in number or number of measures will also be huge in number. Then in that case, how are you going to solve this problem? Because every time we cannot do that. So one option is you can you know search for this. Like say, I want to search something that is starting from yes. You can type yes and it will give you list of all the names that has yes in that, okay? But let's, let's say, suppose you want to specifically to search for the dimensions that are available in the view. So all of this, there might be dimensions and measure irrespective of uh, whatever the name we have. So like say I can type capital D and colon. It will give me list of dimensions that are available in my view, D colon, okay? So I'm just going to write it here, D colon to, to get list of dimensions available same like that if at all you want to get only measures then you can use m colon so these are the measures that are available in your view very important thing to remember okay so m colon to get list of measures available now there will be times where you want to check you know, what are the fields that are that you have created. So the first major difference to observe uh, the difference between the fields that are coming from your database and the fields that you have created is an equal to symbol. See here, there is an equal to symbol in front of this profit ratio, which indicates that this is a derived field or it has been created and the other difference is if you click on this discount and if I try to edit, there is no edit option in this field. See here, you can either duplicate, rename, hide or you know you have all of these options. But if you click on this profit ratio, same thing, you have edit option, which means this can be editable. If I click on this edit, you will see how this profit ratio is derived or how is this calculation return okay so anything that is not possible through calculation or we want to create something from an existing field we all do that using calculated fields and we can call them as derived fields okay and all of such things you can search using c colon okay as of now we have only one field that has been created and this is a default field that is profit ratio, okay? So likewise, whenever, so this is about three important parts here to get dimension measures and this thing. And to get list of calculated fields. Okay, so likewise, whenever you are connecting to any database, okay, or any file, Tableau creates some default fields, 
okay so this can also be your interview question so you need to know about that now you say here i've connected to sample superstore it has created some default fields so what are those the first one is measure name okay and latitude and longitude and measure values so these are the some of the default fields that tableau will create based on your data set okay so this is something that you need to be aware okay so that you can use it so what is measure name and measure values suppose in a single instance you want to find out how are your measures what are they talking about you can simply take this measure name okay again measure name is a dimensional value because it is talking about the names of the measure so unless and until you use or bring in measure value it will not reflect you see in two things i will know how many number of orders i have got what is my total discount what is my total profit all of that i can see here see here total count of orders that i have is in a triple nine four discount is one five six one total profit i have is two like eighty six thousand and a total quantity of products is thirty seven thousand and sales is twenty two lakhs if at all you want to rearrange this you can rearrange this in this measure value shelf i want sales to be first i can do it first and then i want to profit to be second and then maybe number of orders discount and like that i can try to rearrange okay so you can play with this also okay if at all you want to filter and have only selected fields from your measures you can either remove it from here or you can click on this filter help and you can uncheck whatever you don't need like say we need only sales and profit nothing else and maybe count of orders that's it so this way also we can filter so this is something that you should be definitely aware of how we can leverage measure names and measure values okay so remember this point and i'm going to write it here measure names comma measure values and default fields that tableau creates when you are connecting to any data set now next important thing is like say here whenever i am taking any measure like say profit you know automatically it is doing sum of profit now we might get a doubt why it is only sum say here sum why it is only taking sum okay so there are certain default properties that we need to understand or default behavior of tableau suppose if i click on this sales and and this on rm there is an option called as default properties under this if i go to aggregation you see currently it is checked on sum that is why whenever i am trying to bring in this field it is doing sum but like say i want to change it to average i can change it click on this default properties sorry sales default properties aggregation i'm changing it to average i can click on this and i can drop now you see it is average okay so like that i can change my default aggregations also of measures i need but suppose you want to change i'm changing it back to uh, sum again here okay now i'm adding it again now again i am changing it okay so i am changing aggregation to average so when i did that any of your existing view that has an aggregation of sum it will not be impacted but any new aggregate new field you are dragging again that time it will impact so now how can i do that here so here also from your measures you can change it manually click on your measure go to measure sum and from here you can change it to aggregation whatever you need okay very important uh, no uh, thing to remember so this is the default aggregations of tableau likewise we will also have behavior on color here so color you see by default it is blue that is why you see whenever i bring in for the first time it is always blue okay so you can change it if at all you want and assign any of the colors you need 
but for now i am not changing it but yeah you can remember this point okay so we have learned about aggregations as well now default aggregation okay very important point point to remember okay so next is often it happens that we might want to group some of the you know values in a field like say i'm taking customer name here okay and i have sales for them so i'm taking sales and i'm dropping on it label okay maybe i'll change it back to sum here and these are the sales of my customer now i want to do a small analysis like say how much of sales is contributed by customers whose sale whose name is starting from a how much of sales is contributed by customer whose name is starting with a now for that what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to create a group on this okay how can i create a group which means what i'm doing manually i'm trying to group together list of people who i want them to be part of that group like your whatsapp group manually you select who you want to add that in a particular group your friends group your family group your linkedin group all these are groups of you know friends like that i'm clicking on this you go to create option and here you have an option called as a group click on that now from here i can first thing is i can name my group name so i'm just keeping it as group name only and then you can select whatever the customer names you want that to be part of that group okay so you see here currently add to is disabled because we do not have any groups in our view but once i create that this will be enabled that is one thing that you need to remember or observe i'm just selecting few customers here for now using control button and i'm selecting two three four five i have selected after selecting that i'm clicking on group now it created a group with this five customers so i'm writing name as customer name with a okay now under this we have all of these five groups so click on apply okay now you see tableau has created a group with this attachment symbol and it has also named that as a customer name group now if i bring in this you see automatically it has created a group if i remove this you will see somewhere here it because it is starting from c you should see under c how much of sales we have customer name with a it is 16000 okay so like that we can add or create a customer a group on this but now my intention is like our original thing i want to add all the remaining customers as well i can edit my group and if at all i want to add any other group members in that group i can do that as also now i'm holding my shift button selecting this holding shift button and clicking on down arrow so that i can select multiple customers here and i'm selecting all of that customers whose name is starting from a and simply i'm going to this add to option and i'm clicking on this group now automatically all of these are included now if i click on apply you will see change in the value here where did it go here you see here 168000 it is okay like that i can add all the customers whose name is starting from a in one group now i don't want to show any of other customers i want them to be included in other group how can i do that simply we can again edit this group and i can simply click on this include other automatically by default it will categorize the remaining customers in that thing into other group click on apply and it has created a group with other name now this is the total sales per 
or with the customers whose name is starting with A and these are remaining customers. If I want to find out the percentage of sales contribution, I can also do that percent of total. So 7%, 7.3 is the percent of sales contributed by customers whose name is starting with A, whereas other customers have you know, given 92.6% of sales. Okay, that way we can do analysis using groups concept. Now next, next is a sets. Set is a conditional object. So you are providing some condition on the data and based on that, you want to create a set. Like say my top performing students of uh, first class or second class or 10th class in maybe quarterly exam or first term exam or second term exam. However, so with every term you are writing, my top five students might change, right? So I want that to be dynamic. How can I do that? So what I'm doing is I'm taking again a customer name here and I'm going to create option. Under this, I'm taking set. Now I want top performing customers, right? So I'm writing uh, top set here. Okay, by field. How do you want that top 10 customers to be categorized or found? I want them based on sales. So I'm going to select that thing. And what is the aggregation sum? Okay, click on OK. Now you see it created a set with this symbol, Venn diagram symbol. And if I bring in this, by default, this will be categorized as in and out. In means customers who are satisfying the condition. Out means customer who are not satisfying the customers. Again, using this also, I can do simple analysis like say, how much of sales are contributed by my top 10 customers? It is 1,53,000. Whereas the other remaining customers are contributing 21,000 or 21 lakhs, sorry. I can also do percentage of total if at all I want to do that. But our intention is to find the list of customer names, right? So I can click on this. You see by default, it is show in and out of set. This is set, right? So I'm showing it is show in and out, but we want to see the members and click on this. Now these are our top 10 customers. Okay, these are our top 10 customers who with respect to sales. Likewise, if at all I want to find out bottom 10 customers, I can do that also. I'm going to create again set, but this time I'll write it here as bottom 10. And I'm going to top by field instead of top, I'm going to select 10. Bottom 10 customers sales sum. Okay, measure is sales, aggregation is sum. Click on OK. Now it created a customer set again with a bottom set. Now if I try to bring in this also, now you see automatically everything is out because none of my customers from a top 10 group are part of my bottom 10 group. So this point you need to understand. None of my customers from top 10 group are part of my bottom 10 group. That is why every set here is out, out, out because it categorizes by default as in and out of set here everything is out but if i remove this you will again see in and out so bottom 10 customers are contributing let's say 3 lakh uh, 3 uh, 342 if i want to see members these are my bottom 10 customers okay but again i want to show top and bottom 10 in same view top 10 we have seen bottom 10 and now I want top and bottom in same view. How are we going to solve that? So I'm going to create a combined set using these two objects, top and bottom. I'm holding my control button and selecting these two. Okay, right clicking on this and here I have an option called as create combined set. I got this. So I'm writing it as top and bottom. And okay, so your custom you see here two sets it is trying to show customer name from bottom set 
and top set. So here, first thing is all members in both the sets, which means how many values will get 10 from here and 10 from here. Total 20 values will get shared members means if there are any common customers between your top and bottom, then only those will be displayed. And like that customer, if you select this option, customer name bottom set except the shared members, which means any of the common customers that you have that will be eliminated and only the bottom set will be displayed and the opposite of this is this. According to your requirement, you can use one among these four options. But for now, I'm using all members in both the sets because I want all the customers to be displayed. So I'm expecting 20 customers here. Click OK. It created again top end and bottom end. So I'm just taking this and this. Now see the analysis. Top 10 and bottom 10 customers together contributed to 1,54,000 sales whereas other customers contributed to this. Now again, if I go here and click on show members in set, and if I try to sort it, these are my top 10 and these are my bottom 10. That way we can do the analysis, okay? So again, set is a conditional object, whereas group is manually, you are grouping whatever the items you want and you are categorizing them as a part of whatever you want, okay, as a part of group you want, okay. So, and this is about set. Next small topic that we need to know is about bins. Bins is again how you are categorizing your measure values. Like say we have, we all have learned about statistics in that we used to have a class interval kind of concept where, you know, it we used to divide between 10, 20, like say 1 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, like that. So 10 was the class interval. Same thing if at all you want to do analysis on the bins. Like say we see analysis on like one to three years, how many employees I have. Three to five years, how many employees I have. Five to seven, how many employees I have. Like that. Or one to five, five to 10, 10 to 15, like that. And we categorize them as junior, mid-level and senior employees, right? <laughs> Similarly, if at all I want to do it on measure, I can do it using the concept called as bin. So I'm selecting that profit here. So always remember one important point, bins are performed only on measures. So this is one point you need to remember. Go to create and under this you will see bins option. First thing is you need to decide the size of bin. So I'm selecting 500 as my size, okay? and. It's, these are the default values, minus 6,000 to 8,400 value. So minus 6,600 is the minimum profit we had. 8,400 is the maximum profit we had. Okay, I'm clicking on this and it created a profit bin. And if I drop it here, you see the axis, zero to 500, zero to minus 500, 500 to 1,000, minus 500 to minus 1,000 which means between every interval here, 500 is the value. Now, if I simply pull my profit, you will observe how are our profits distributed. So if you observe, this is where our majority of profits we are getting, zero to 500 and zero to minus 500 or 1000. These are the major profit zone that we are getting. So that kind of analysis we can do and this chart that we have created is called as a histogram chart. Okay, so that's about bins. Okay, so I think we have learned very important parts of Tableau today. Uh, and hope, I, ho I hope you have found today's video interesting. If it does, don't forget to leave a comment so that it can share wider audience. See you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye and have a good day.